program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. If a thought comes up, oh my goodness, God's punishing me, or, you know, because of God's punishment, I'm going to end up in hell. Uh, no, no, no. Your destiny has already been set. You've already passed from death to life. You are being dealt with by a father who loves you. Remember, this is chast chastening of the Lord. It's the father dealing with you in love, but he is going to be dealing with you. Did you miss the homecoming last year? Well, the next Grace Life Conference is homecoming. The reunion, it's happening again in 2024. July 11th through 13th are the dates. The World Dome in College Park, Georgia is the location. Don't miss three days jam-packed with the word, wisdom, and fun. There'll be special sessions for men, women, ministers, and more. Text Grace Life, one word, to 51555 to claim your seat today. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We sing by His grace, so we embrace your love today. I'm going to talk to you about the chastening of the Lord. What is that? How does it work? Is God going to go back to punishing people? If you know him, you know the answer to that. But what I need to do is really dig into this this morning. And I need you to really dig in this with me this morning. I don't have any cartwheels or flips. Just digging into this thing. Just going line by line. You can do a cartwheel if, when you get it. Amen? Amen? So let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 in the King James. Hebrews chapter 12. As we begin to deal with this issue of the chastening of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, and let's start at verse 5, and I read, it, read verse 5 through 11, Hebrews 12, 5 through 11. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise it. There's a reason for it. There's an objective behind it. There's something that he's trying to work out of you. He says, nor faint. So don't despise it, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chast chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence or respect. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit. So this is going to be for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yielded 
the peaceable fruit of righteousness mm. unto them which are exercised, it, it's yielded unto them which are exercised thereby. Now, one aspect of, of the discipline of grace is not always recognized as being of grace, and it is the chastening of the Lord. It's an aspect of the discipline of grace. We, we got we to gotta, we gotta teach on this, too. We can't bypass this, you know. Well, I know it's in the Scripture somewhere, but I don't really want to hear about it. Chastening is God the Father dealing with his child in love. Now, that's the foundation of this. Chastening is God the Father. Now, what I just said, God the Father. It's God acting as Father, disciplining or dealing with his children in love. God deals with us. He doesn't punish us, but he deals with us. Under the Old Testament, there was punishment for not keeping the law. But in this New Testament, under this covenant of grace, God is not the judge, he's the father, and he will deal with his children, how? In love. Everybody say in love. Because the Scripture just said, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Now, he says, if he love you, he chasteneth. Wow. It is a sign of sonship and a reminder that one has not been forsaken by God. Chastisement is a sign that you are a son of God. If you don't know chastisement, your sonship is in question. And if everybody's on the bus, say amen. I know I ain't lost nobody that quick. I just got started. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> now, because chastening is at times accompanied by the visitation of distress and affliction, it is at time. In fact, let, let me show you this before I get going. First Peter chapter 5 and 9, I was, I was pretty fascinated with this because, you know, he says that, you know, our, the, ch the chastening of the Lord is a sign that we are sons of God and that uh, he chasteneth all of those who are his sons. In First Peter chapter 5 and 9, he says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions, afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So uh, not only you and me, but all of our brethren around the world, he said there are some afflictions that are going to be accomplished. Now, I don't want you jumping ahead of me, because if you do, you might get in fear or you might get a little depressed. So don't jump ahead. This is a good story. <laughs> like for a moment, it's, it's going to feel like, oh my God, what happened to the freedom and grace? Now we got to get to the nitty gritty on this stuff, amen? So because chastening is at times accompanied by the visitation of distress and affliction, it's often confused with punishment. And so we just showed you that afflictions and distresses will come as a result of chastening, but it's not punishment. It, it, it's not true that it's punishment, for punishment is, is of, 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 of God who was the judge. Punishment is, dealing, is the God who was the judge in justice exacting the full penalty of his broken law. So in the Old Testament, if you broke the law, you were punished because, God, because of the God of justice, there had to be that punishment. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. People died for complaining. You remember that little list about, I mean, several thousand people fell dead because they were complaining. How many of you know the church would be empty this morning if people still fell dead for complaining? And the pulpit would be empty too. Amen. 
in this covenant, in this covenant of the law, there is no fatherhood of God in that covenant of the law. There is no expression of his love in that covenant of the law. Punishment is the wrath of God poured out upon all who reject his son today. It is condemnation that should come upon, un upon this unbelieving world. And the believer in Christ, the Bible says, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. I need you to see that. Uh, John chapter 5 and verse 24, King James. John 5, 24. I need you to see there is no way, no how you and I who are born again today under the Father of love, we are not to come into condemnation. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Now, if you're saved, say, say out loud, I have, well, say, I have everlasting life <laughs> with Christ. All right. He says, And he shall not come into condemnation. But what happened is you passed from death when you were unsaved to life now that you're saved. Praise God. And then Romans 6, 14, just to verify this again for you, Romans 6, 14 says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? You are not under the law where there is punishment. You are under grace where there is this unrestrained, restricted of the love of love God. He is, you are not under the law, but under grace. Say, I am under the grace of God. Okay, so if that comes up anytime throughout this sermon, just, just wipe it out. If a thought comes up, oh my goodness, God's punishing me, or, you know, because of God's punishment, I'm going to end up in hell. Uh, no, no, no. Your destiny has already been set. You've already passed from death to life. You are being dealt with by a father who loves you. Remember, this is chast chastening of the Lord. It's the father dealing with you in love. But he is going to be dealing with you. Now, let no one presume, and this is just to, to get this out to make sure we got it, the, that the grace of God, don't presume upon the grace of God and think that because he shall not come into condemnation, don't think that just because you don't come into condemnation that you can live according to the desires of this old carnal nature without suffering the full consequences thereof. What am I saying? Sin has consequences. Oh, but I'm under the grace of God and the Father loves me. Sin has consequences. It does. I told you the other week. You go fooling around with somebody's wife and the husband come home early and, and pulls a shotgun out and you died early and, and God said, what you here for? The consequences. <laughs> you under grace being buried. <laughs> you get that, right? Th there's no way, nowhere where grace is the license or the okay to sin. Grace is how you get out of sin. It's not permission to sin. Amen. And the church said amen. amen. And the wall said amen. amen. God does deal with the sins of believers. This is by chastening. He does deal with the sin of believers. And how is he going to deal with the sin of believers? This is by chastening. Now, God's chastening, chastening is to correct and to purify. So there's sin going on, there's some habits going on, stuff going on. You're saved, you'll get to heaven. But he says, I, I have the job as a father to correct, and I have a job as a father to purify. Not uh, to imply that is, you know, to make you guilty. God's not going to use guilt to try to get you out of it. But he, he wants to clear up the, per, the imperfections, to correct and to purify. The chastening is to correct it and to purify it. See, you, you, we're, we're no longer slaves to sin. You just might need a little help. To correct and to purify. All right. Uh, and, and the reason why I'm so 
just kind of making sure we start off right is that you sometimes don't go, you'll get, you'll get to the extreme and every time something bad happened to you, you're like, well, God let that happen uh, because he's trying to show me something. Now, sometimes it happened because of what you did. Yeah. God was like, oh, I wasn't intending on using that at all. What happened? Now, will he permit certain things? Yes. And sometimes some of the stuff you start, he'll just permit it on. Yeah, I'm going to show you this. Now, before you pull out your degree, thinking you know more than everybody, just let me finish saying what I got to say. I can see some of you not. Well, you know, I, 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 I don't agree with that right now. You ain't heard me. <laughs> because I had a chance to sit down and look at 40-something years of my life in ministry and say, that's the truth. That's the truth. Oh, my God. Man, I wonder if that hadn't happened, what would I have done? God knows how to get your attention. Yeah. Well, the Lord, the, Lord, the, Lord, uh, Lord, the Lord corrects us with words. I don't, I don't disagree. He does correct you with words. The problem is you ain't listening to those words. <laughs> he told you to stop. He told you don't do that. He told you don't go no that way. He told you to leave that girl alone. He told you don't, don't call Fred no more, and you keep calling him. He, he told you that. He told you that. He told you that not only through your spirit, but he had a prophet come up and said, Thus saith the Lord. So he's he been trying to talk to you in words. Y'all know what I'm talking about, though. He's been trying. Some of y'all remember talking about, I knew I wasn't supposed to do that. Yes. Oh, watch this. This is a famous one. Something told me. Now you, now you want to call God or something. <laughs> something told me not to come here. You get married, wake up the next morning, oh, 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 Roscoe wakes up with his curly in, curls in his hair and his six-pack, and he's floating in the air, turning his head around, spitting up green stuff. And he looks at you because you're a biblically equality woman, and he says, give me some coffee or I'll choke you out. And you're like, ah, something told me not to marry Roscoe. So let me show you something, and I want to use gold and, 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 and the dew drops of the morning as an illustration of what I believe is going on here. Hebrews 12, 29 reminds us that God is a consuming fire. Gold is chastened, that, that it may become pure. How? Intense heat melts it into a liquid and thus separates it from all of the impurities. And then there's the, the dewdrops sparkling in the morning. And that was by the heat of yesterday's sun drawn as a vapor from the stagnant pool. And then the cool of the night condenses it into water so pure that it refracts the rays of the sun into full beauty of the spectrum when you see it. Now, both of these both these processes, the one dealing with the gold and the one dealing with the, the dewdrops, both these processes are for the sole purpose of purification. And so likewise is the chastening of the Father's love. It is to remove all which is unpleasing to him. And what have we learned that is unpleasing to him, self-dependence, self-dependence. Listen to me carefully, self-dependence. Remember the series we did on the purpose of trials. The trial of your faith is the purification of your faith. It is a removal of all impurities of dependence on self. Dependence on self versus dependence on God. Self-dependence is impure and needs to be removed. You cannot, will not spend time, you will not spend time in heaven in self-dependence. That is going to be 
burned off. You're going to go to heaven. Now, a lot of people are like, if I can just make it in, I'll be all right. I don't want to just make it in because I'm going to show you tonight. Today, a lot of folks are going to make, make it in, but some will have gain and some will suffer loss. You're still going to be in heaven. And I was looking at that. I'm like, I, I got kind of nervous when I saw that. I was like, wait a minute. Am I still in heaven? And, and the scripture literally says, you'll still be in heaven, but you may suffer loss versus gain. And I'm like, man, I got to get in this. I wasn't going to teach it. I figured they ain't ready for it. Let's, let's do this next year. He said, no, now. Now, the answers to this question, the unrighteous, why do the righteous suffer? Why do the righteous have to go through stuff? Why do the righteous have to be afflicted? Y'all do know that, right? No, 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 I don't believe the righteous have to suffer. Boy, read the Bible. They that live godly shall suffer what? How many of y'all trying to live godly? All right, you're going to go through some stuff. You're going to meet some stuff. I, I, I just get so freaked out when I meet Christians who are, are playing like they ain't never went through nothing. Hey, man, how you doing? Perfect, flawless, all is well. Is all well all the time? Oh, yes, amen. What? No, no, no. You lying. <laughs> You're lying because God is going to use these afflictions and the things we have to go through and the persecutions and people talking about you and, and, and losing your job and not having enough money to pay your rent, all your money spent, a little bit to buy some food, baby need to pass you. Look, you got a light bill due. You even got a gas bill too. Telephone disconnect. Wait till your next paycheck. Paycheck bounce on you. What are you going to do? We have issues. It's called life. No one's exempt from it. So what does he plan on doing with all of these things, persecutions and stuff that comes our way? And so this answers the question, why do righteous suffer? The unrighteous, all who have not accepted righteousness of God, all who are not born again, they are not in the sight of God gold to be chastened. There's no chastisement for people who are, have not been born again. It's, it's, it's for those who are sons. It's not for those who have not been born again, okay? There is no spiritual life to free from in, impurities of this world. There is no, no spiritual life to, to free from the impur, impurities of— I mean, a guy who's not born again, he, he ain't got no spiritual life. So we're not— the, the, he, he, he already bound to hell, so there is no need to try to do any getting rid of impurities of self-dependence because that's, that's how he lives. This is my life. I'm going to do what I want to do with it. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says something. Look at that. I want to show you this real quick. I mean, those people are already dead in trespasses and sin. There's no, there's no spiritual life to, to free some, somebody from some impurities. Verse, verse 1 says, And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses in sin. There are people that are dead in trespasses in sin. So while the unrighteous do not suffer by chast, uh, chastening, there awaits the judgment and the fiery indignation which shall devour them who fail to make Jesus Lord of their life. People don't go to hell because of their behavior. They go to hell because they reject Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10, 27. Let me show you that real quick. Hebrews chapter 10, 27. Is everybody on the bus still? Amen. I know I'm overemphasizing this, but you'll see why. We, we got this, like, got to get this foundation down. Verse 27 says, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. And so, yeah, unless, unless the unsaved receive Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior, they, they will be devoured. They're going to hell. There's none of this stuff, stuff of, well, you know, everybody's going to, going to heaven. Only those who accept 
the um, sin offering, only those who accept the peace offering, only, only those who accept the ransom that was paid for us, and that's Jesus. You, you don't go, somebody says, well, you're going to hell because of bad behavior. Everybody got some. That's why you need the grace of God to help you through the bad behavior. The behavior will get better, but you're going to heaven because you accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. That's why you go to heaven. Do you ever wonder if God is punishing you? In his two-message series, The Discipline of Grace, Creflo Dollar uncovers the truth about how God actually corrects and guides his children. Self-dependence is impure. God's chastening is to correct and to purify. If a thought comes up, oh my goodness, because of God's punishment, I'm gonna end up in hell. Uh, no, 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 your destiny has already been set. You've already passed from death to life. You are being dealt with by a father who loves you. This is chastening of the Lord. It's the father dealing with you in love, but he is going to be dealing with you. Both messages can be yours today for a love gift of just 15 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or 25 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore, scan the QR code, or call the number on your screen to get yours now. How many you know when God begins to swoop down, things begin to happen, the impossible becomes possible, miraculous things begin to happen? There is nothing that is too messy. There's nothing that is too dirty that he cannot change. Connect with a community of like-minded women who are on a similar path of growth and success. Be fresh, be bold, be empowered. Be at Bloom Radical Women's Conference 2024. You're invited to unlock your harvest with Taffy Dollar, Dr. Anita Phillips, and more on March 14th and 15th. Don't wait for permission to bloom. It's time for you to fulfill your purpose and receive all that you've worked for. Seats are limited, so grab your friends and text RADICAL to 51555 or visit taffydollar.org now. Are you ready to bloom? By the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.